We start this week out by talking about Mitchell Trubisky. He's been playing very good recently with 1,389 yards, 11 touchdowns, and only four interceptions. That completion percentage continues to rise. And if you look at his season stats, he started out pretty weak against the 49ers with two INTs, and then Raiders and Texans, he threw one apiece. But the last three games, the Ravens, Rams, and Jaguars, he has thrown for eight touchdowns and zero interceptions. And that QBR continues to rise. 145 in the last game. The completion percentage continues to go up. He is playing very good football at the moment. It's going to be pretty difficult to give Kenny Pickett his spot back when he returns. Kenny Pickett has only attempted three passes on the season, and he is set to return next week. So we could be dealing with a little bit of a quarterback controversy moving forward because Kenny Pickett may not be our starter next week. So I mentioned it in the last video that I would be bumping up the INT, the interception slider uh, moving forward. I bumped up the user interceptions to 37. It was at 35. And I decided to keep the CPU interception slider just at 35. Reason being is because I believe that we can throw interceptions. You guys saw it in week two against the Browns. Mason Rudolph threw four interceptions. You are seeing quite a few dropped interceptions by the CPU. So if we can continue to see that and Trubisky and all of our quarterbacks are playing perfect football because of dropped interceptions, then we will have to bump that up eventually. But at the moment, I'm keeping the CPU slider at the same at 35, and I'm gonna be bumping up the user slider to 37. So we have a short week here as we're gonna be playing Thursday night football against the Tennessee Titans. Alan Robinson wants to talk about what should we do as a team. The goal is just go out there, score some touchdowns and beat the Titans. We are a hot offense at the moment. And that kind of feels refreshing knowing that the real life Pittsburgh Steelers with Matt Canada just aren't good at all. But here in our series, we have actually gotten a pretty good offense. You look at offensive points per game, we are sixth in the NFL. We are fifth in rushing, 24th in passing. But all in all, we have been a pretty good offense at least the last couple of weeks. One thing I did want to show you guys about scouting here is I went ahead and I looked at some of these quarterbacks. You got Sidney Lucas. We're probably not going to draft him, but he had a pretty cool draft story. We went ahead and added him to the board. But there are a couple day three and projected undrafted free agent quarterbacks on here that looked pretty solid. So, you know, if one of these guys were available in the fifth round, sixth round, seventh round, maybe we would, you know, take a shot on one of these quarterbacks. I mean, I'm not saying we're going to have a Brock Purdy style quarterback that we draft, but you know, it is a possibility. And if he turns out to be a pretty good quarterback, then we could have even further quarterback controversy going into next season. I think the goal on defense is to stop the inside run. You got Derrick Henry. As a matter of fact, I'm going to change that to defend the outside run. The defend the inside run is kind of broken in Madden, but you got Derrick Henry, who is a very good running back, 96 overall. We need to find a way to slow him down. And then on offense, I think we're going to Continue to go with run inside. It's what's worked best for us throughout the season. Najee Harris is putting together a very good season at the moment. So that's what we're going to try and do. Just run the football inside and then pass when we have the option to. We have lived off of the play action. And when you can run the football as well as we have, then play action is that much easier. We will be without Keanu Benton in this game. He doesn't have an upgrade here. So he is now up to an 80 overall, but he suffered a turf toe injury in practice. So he will be out for this game. That would pretty much set up Montrevious Adams to be the lone guy. And then you got guys like Braden Fihoko and Rennell Wren. He's also injured. So that would probably mean that Cameron Hayward will get more opportunities in the 3-4. I'm not sure what we're really going to go with there, but we will figure it out when we hit the field for the game. But Keanu Benton out for this game. That is huge news. Here we are in Pittsburgh for some Thursday night football we're going to be wearing our color rush uniforms, and in my opinion, they are the best color rush uniforms in the NFL. You know, the NFL kind of flopped on the color rush, but they nailed the Pittsburgh Steelers with the all black look. It's a very good, very clean look. And then you have the Tennessee Titans. They'll be wearing their generic road uniforms here on Thursday night. As the Titans are healthy as they, they can be, Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill, and then that defense loaded with guys like Jeffrey Simmons and Kevin Byard. I shouldn't say they're loaded, but they are a pretty solid defense. They're going to look to slow down our run. And then Kevin Byard is somebody who can cover a lot of ground in the secondary. The Titans are a team who went quarterbacks in back-to-back -back drafts with Malik Willis and then Will Levis the following season. Will Levis, in my opinion, does not he doesn't deserve to start at all. He puts mayonnaise in his coffee. The dude's a weirdo. Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback at the moment, but they might have their quarterback of the future on this roster. It'll be interesting. Will we see... Malik Willis at all in this game. 
and a special package. We are set to get the football first as Calvin Austin is deep to return. He's going to fair catch this one in the end zone, and that will bring us out to the 25-yard line. We are led by Mitchell Trubisky, somebody who is playing very good football at the moment. Three straight games without an interception, and his QBR completion percentage all continue to rise. 11 touchdowns, only four interceptions on the season, and 1,300 passing yards. First down and 10, the Titans are loading the box. We're going to give this one to Najee Harris, and he's going to pick up a couple of yards. Kevin Byard already making a play instantly in this game. Najee Harris last week, 11 carries, 78 yards, and one touchdown. He did leave the game late with an injury. Titans loading the box again. I think they're committed to try and stop in the run at the moment. Kevin Byard again on the stop as Darnell Washington is injured. This is a very thin tight end core because Connor Hayward serves as not only our fullback, but he is our third tight end. What would that mean moving forward if Connor Hayward has to take more tight end snaps? Third down and four upcoming. There is Connor Hayward on the field. Pat Fryermuth is not on the field. We're going to try and get this one to Deontay Johnson, and it was nearly intercepted by McCreary. See, there's an instance where, you know, it feels like the defense should have had an interception there. You know, does that mean we should raise the slider? I don't really know, but we are forced to punt regardless as Presley Harvin, it feels like every week continues to slim down. The guy must be on the South Beach diet. And this is a pretty clean punt. And the Titans will take over at the 26-yard line. As here comes Ryan Tannehill. Probably not going to be in their future plans. As this could be one of his final years in Tennessee. 12 touchdowns, only 5 interceptions, 1,500 yards so far this season for Ryan Tannehill. There is Braden Fihoko out there for Keanu Benton. So, no Cameron Hayward still in the 3-4. There's Tannehill on the move, and he's got Traylon Burks for a first down. So I don't know if Cameron Hayward should be moved to the 3-4. Probably that would be the plan, just seeing as we don't want to give up too many big runs. And when you take out Keanu Benton, you know, he is one of our best players on the defense so far. So two straight passes to open up the game for Tennessee. Derrick Henry is in the backfield here. Chiga Conquo is the tight end here is the give to derrick henry and he's got space he's only going to pick up a few yards but it is a first down first down and 10 here for the titans here's another run with derrick henry and he's got 10 yards on first down they move across midfield first down and 10 here on the titans opening possession they are threatening here is Tannehill. drops back and he's got a man open it's going to be a nine yard pickup as Tannehill is three for three that's jameson crowder on the reception Cameron Hayward now in at nose as Montrevious Adams probably should be our nose here in the 3-4. But Cameron Hayward on the field now as they're going to drop back on second one to pass. Tannehill getting out of the pocket. He's got a Conquo wide open and he is going to be wrestled out of bounds at the three-yard line. First and goal for the Titans. First down and goal for the Titans from the three-yard line. Fullback in the formation. Here's the give to Derrick Henry and he is taken down by Mika Fitzpatrick. Cole Holcomb came in and cleaned it up. A tackle for loss. For the Steelers defense. Second down and goal. The give is to Henry. And there's Montrevious Adams. Another tackle for loss. The Steelers defense is getting after Derrick Henry. Third down and goal. A big third down and goal. DeAndre Hopkins is the receiver out there for the Titans. Kind of forgot about him a little bit. Here is Tannehill to the end zone. And it's caught for a touchdown. Traylon Burks as the Titans have an early lead. This is not the start. I expected in this one as the Titans marched right down the field and scored the opening touchdown of the game. Kirby Joseph tried to get there to draw the ball free. He was a tad bit too late as the Titans are going to take a 7 to nothing lead unless Shannon Sullivan can get a block PAT. It's not going to happen as the Titans take a 7 to nothing lead. How do we respond? Calvin Austin will return this one from his own two-yard line as he had a touchdown in last week's episode, last week's game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He is turning into a threat in the return game as out comes Mitchell Trubisky. Jalen Warren into the game now. First down and 10. Here is the give to Jalen Warren, and he's going to pick up a solid eight or seven yards on first down. See the Titans stack in the box yet again here. We're going to try and run the football, but if the Titans are going to just stack the box, then we may be forced to try and pass a little bit more. As here is Najee Harris. He's got a lot of space. Najee Harris with a broken tackle, and he's across midfield. One of his longest runs on the season so far. I was looking at the stats off, you know, off camera. And Najee Harris' longest run was like 27 yards. And I feel like he's only had a couple of runs that were longer than 20. So one of his longest runs right there. First down and 10 here for the Steelers. Trying to hit Allen Robinson on the out route. And he's got it. And he's going to be taken down at the sticks. Move the chains. 
First down and 10 here for the Steelers. As Trubisky's going to get out of the pocket. Try and hit Pat Fryermuth. He's got him. Pat Fryermuth's got space. And he's going to be into the red zone. What a play by Mitchell Trubisky. Thought he was just going to scramble, throw the ball away maybe. But no, he was patient. And he continued to look downfield. Pat Fryermuth found some space, picks up 20 yards. First down and 10. Here is the give to Najee Harris. And he is going nowhere. This front seven for the Titans is playing pretty good at the moment. One big run is really the difference here on this drive. Second down and nine here. We're going to get this one to Pat Fryermuth. He's got space, and he's going to have a first down pick up his second reception on the drive. First down and goal. We're going to go play fake, try and get this one to Connor Hayward. I almost hit Y by accident. I thought I did. Instead, Trubisky does have a completion. Only three yards, though. Kevin Byard is matched up on Deontay Johnson. He's going to come in motion here on second down and goal. Try and get this one to Johnson on the jet sweep, and he's going to lose yards. Third down and goal upcoming. Third down and goal. Najee Harris comes in motion. Safeties move back. As here is Trubisky. He's going down. He's sacked. Felt the pressure, but also felt just that nobody was open. Didn't want to throw an interception, so Trubisky just takes the sack instead. That will set up a field goal attempt for Chris Boswell. He has been perfect on the season, and he is going to remain perfect. 7-3, to three, Titans lead as the first quarter nears its close. Titans offense moved down the field with ease on their first possession. Here they are for their second. First down and 10. Here's the gift to Derrick Henry. He's got some space to the edge, but Cole Holcomb is in the backfield for a tackle for a loss. Derrick Henry only five carries for 10 yards. Our rush defense has been notoriously bad to start this season, but they are playing pretty good at the moment here in the opening quarter. Second down and 10. Here is Tannehill. Drops back. He's going to get out of the pocket. And he's just going to throw this one away. Third down and 10 upcoming. A chance to get off the field with 12 seconds left in the first quarter. Third down and 10. Steelers are going to bring four. Henry stays in the help block. It's Chiga Conquo, and he is going to be stopped short of the first down. Joey Porter Jr. on the tackle. If Joey Porter Jr. can be a sure-handed tackler on the defensive side of the ball, along with good coverage, he is going to be a player that fans are going to love for a long time. That's a great play there by Joey Porter Jr. As Chica Conco, he had a lot of space to run. He's not a slow guy at all. But Joey Porter Jr. takes a perfect angle to get to him. And they are going to force a punt as Calvin Austin is set to return this one. He's got a little bit of space. Kind of say that one a lot. Here is Calvin Austin. He's going to try and outrun the defender. But that's a great play by the defender. Titans stacking the box again here as they show that 3-4 defense. As we're going to continue to try and run against it, though, here is Najee Harris. He's going to pick up five yards on first down, his fifth carry of the game. Second down and five, and we are going to go play action. We talked about that in the opening as our play action game has been very good due to the fact that we're able to run the ball with success as George Pickens has his first reception of the game. Something that we're seeing out of Trubisky is he's just throwing the ball on the run much better than he did in the opening games. Is that something that you like to see? If a quarterback can throw on the run pretty well and he can throw versus pressure, you know, you really like that. Second down and seven as we're going to go with the split look. Jalen Warren and Najee Harris both in the backfield. Here's a give with Jalen Warren. He's going to have a first down trying to juke a man and a big run for Jalen Warren. First down and 10 here for the Steelers. We're going to throw this one deep to George Pickens. He is neck and neck with the defenders. That one's going to fall incomplete. One-on-one -on -one coverage, you're going to throw that one up to George Pickens 10 out of 10 times. Second down and 10, here is a run with Najee Harris. And this run defense for the Titans has been very good so far. Seven carries, 38, 38 yards, I should say, for Najee Harris. And it's going to be third down and eight upcoming. Third down and eight, try and hit Pickens quickly. He's got it, and he's going to be a couple yards short of the first down. We can send out Chris Boswell, but on fourth down and two, I think I want to go for this. Fourth down and two. For the Steelers. We're going to snap it. So the play is going to go off. Here is Fryermuth. He's got it and he's got a first down. I like that formation. It's like, I don't even know what you want to call it, but you got Fryermuth and Najee Harris both in towards the line of scrimmage. And each of their routes in the formation, I'll show you real quick, are kind of like a, they wait and then they start running their route. I don't really know what to call that. I'm sure there's a name for it. I'm probably just being an idiot. But a delay, kind of a delayed route. And the defense has their hands full when we show that look. As on this one right here, I kind of like stick at the moment with George Pickens. If we try to hit him quickly, we do hit Pickens quickly, and he's going to pick up five yards. 
We have been pretty balanced on offense. 10 rushes, 10 passes. Here's a rush for Jalen Warren. Jalen Warren with a first down pickup. Three carries, 24 yards. He has been more efficient than Najee Harris so far. First down and 10. Allen Robinson coming in motion. Fake to him. Fake to Warren. Try and hit George Pickens. And that's going to be intercepted by Kevin Byard. Can anybody get to him? Deontay Johnson trying to wrestle him down. Byard finally taken down by Allen Robinson. I think either we didn't, you know, we read that coverage wrong. I read it as zone. I didn't expect anybody to run with Pickens, so I had to lead him up the field. I'm sure there was somebody open. I was just kind of staring down Pickens right from the jump because it felt like that linebacker had his head turned. If anything, we should probably go to Allen Robinson. Just get it right back to him. Instead, Trubisky throws his first interception since the game against who? The Texans, I do believe. Kevin Byers is a guy that's going to take that away 10 out of 10 times. And unfortunately, we are turning the football over. It's kind of refreshing to see us throw an interception, though. It felt like the CPU just was dropping way too many. And that's why I bumped ours up. I don't want to continue to have dropped interceptions. I mean, we're going to have some bit of realism. And on that play right there, I read it wrong. Kevin Byard made a pretty good play as the Titans are going to move the chains on the Chigakonkwa reception. He has been Tannehill's favorite target so far as Derrick Henry really hasn't gotten going so far in this game. First down in tennis, another pass. And this one was played by Quan Alexander. Luckily, Quan Alexander got a hand on it because Levi Wallace might have been able to intercept that one. Second down to 10, another pass here as this one is going to be hit to a Conquo quickly for a pickup of five. Third down to five here for the Titans. Tannehill quick, quickly drops back and he's got an open guy as that is Wiley on the reception. First down for the Titans. Not a great start to the game here for the Steelers. Only three points so far in the first half. Next time, I think we're just going to think about taking our three because if we're going to intercept the, you know, if we're going to throw an interception, it really doesn't matter. It's Traylon Burks with stone hands. Second down and 10, they have not ran Derrick Henry that much in this game. This one feels like a run with a fullback in the formation. Instead, it's play action. Here comes Montrevious Adams, and he is in there for a sack. Derrick Henry just whiffed on Montrevious Adams, somebody that's not known for being a good pass rusher, but he can get in there from time to time. Third down and 16 here for the Titans offense. Here comes TJ Watt waiting for his first sack of the game as that's going to be an inaccurate throw by Tannehill. Fourth down upcoming. I'm liking the defensive battle so far. Feels like we're finally getting some good games. Last week was the start of it. A great game against Jacksonville. This has been the complete opposite this week. Both defenses have been playing very well. Safety's kind of cheating up a little bit here on first down. Here's the give to Najee Harris and he's going to pick up four yards. Three and a half minutes left here in the second quarter. Hopefully we are the last team to touch the football. Second down and six here for the Steelers. Here's a give to Najee Harris, trying to be a little patient. Instead, he only picks up a maybe one, maybe two yards. Third down and five upcoming. Third down and five. Deontay Johnson is open, and he's going to have a first down reception. I think that's his first catch of the game. It is. First catch for only nine yards. First down and ten. This will be the last play of the first no, oh, my fault. This is the last play before the two-minute warning, I meant to say. Nine-yard pickup. I am everywhere with this commentary at the moment. So, second down and one here for the Steelers' offense as we've reached a two-minute warning in this one. We're going to hit Calvin Austin in the slot, and that was just really couldn't get anything going. Probably should go with the rack reception, but I just don't like doing that one. That's the only one I really don't like to do as that's going to bring up third down and one for the Steelers' offense from the 50-yard line. Third and one, we're just going to give this one to Najee Harris, pick up the first down, and then with a minute and a half left, we can think about calling timeouts, but I'm not going to call them yet. I really want to be careful with Kevin Byard out there because he's a guy who takes away a lot of space when he's on the field. First down and 10 here. Trubisky sees a hole, and he's going to go down for a sack. The Nico Autry in there for the sack, the second sack for the Tennessee Titans. The Steelers are not really hurrying at the moment. And with 45 seconds left, maybe they need to start. Here's Najee Harris quickly out to him, and he's going to drop it. Third down and 11 upcoming, and you are not in field goal range at the moment. Third down and 11 for the Steelers' offense, as we're going to go five wide here, see if we can't make anything happen. Trubisky's going to get out of the pocket. He had a man open. Instead, he's going to try and lob this one to Fryermuth. What a play by Mitchell Trubisky. Timeout, Pittsburgh. What a play. I know that George Pickens was wide open, but for some reason, I didn't trust myself to try and throw it to him. I don't know why, but I just didn't trust myself. 
Instead, Mitchell Trubisky makes a ridiculous play. First down and 10 from the 29-yard line. What a play that was. We're going to try and hit Deontay Johnson, and that pass is overthrown. Second down for Pittsburgh, as that was a terrible route by Deontay Johnson. I don't know why, but that route, the way it shows up in the playbook, it shows up that, like, I guess it does say that he's going to stop there, but I don't understand why he would stop there. Doesn't make any sense. It is what it is. Third down and 10 upcoming. You just don't want to turn the football over at this point. As we're going to see if Trubisky can flip this play. He is going to flip it. As it looks like they're going to be double teaming Deontay Johnson. That's the way it appears. And Trubisky's just going to get out of the pocket, throw it away. And I think we're going to take our three here. Just a sloppy first half. A sloppy commentary job by myself as well. So just sloppy first half. But it feels good to know that you could go in to the half. with. Well, I might have spoke too soon. Okay, it is good. As It feels good to know that you can go into the half with only a one-point lead. I mean, the Titans with only a one-point lead. Man, I've, I'm sloppy at the moment. But 7-6 to six is the score. Hopefully, we don't allow any chaos towards the end of the first half like there was last week when Calvin Austin returned a kickoff return touchdown with about this much time left in the half. So we're going to go with the dime look here. They're definitely going to run the football. They have a three tight end set here. Hopefully, Derrick Henry doesn't gash us with a huge gain as he's just going to cover up the football. The Titans aren't going to call any timeouts. Derrick Henry only six carries for 15 yards at the end of the first half, but it has been a defensive battle through 30 minutes. Even though we're not playing on 15-minute quarters, you guys get what I'm saying. But we need to figure it out on offense here. You know, Kevin Byard is kind of making me a little afraid to throw the football downfield. And then running the football hasn't really worked out for us. You know, Jalen Warren has had a pretty good half of football, but Najee Harris... Kind of slow start. Here are the games this week. Cleveland takes on the Cardinals. Joshua Dobbs was traded to the Cardinals from the Browns earlier in the year. So can Josh Jobs get some revenge? Bills and Bengals on Sunday night football. And then the Ravens will be taking on the Seattle Seahawks to try and move to 9-0. Titans will start with the football here in the second half. As this has been a defensive battle. Buffalo and Cincinnati. Cincinnati 2-5 and five, as you see down below. On Sunday Night Football. It'll be interesting to see if Cincinnati can pull off the upset. They did last year in the playoffs. But we're not here to talk about the Cincinnati bungholes. Here is Ryan Tannehill in the Tennessee Titans offense. 7-6 to six is the score. Derrick Henry's been a pretty much non-factor in this one. Our offense has moved the football pretty well in this one. But just not enough to give us the lead at the moment. As Tannehill drops back. And this one is a poor pass intended for Derrick Henry. Cameron Hayward got in the backfield. As for some reason, there's a scuffle on the field. We have allowed only 15 rushing yards, which is surprising when you talk about the league's best back, you could argue. Here's a good pass by Tannehill to DeAndre Hopkins, third down and three upcoming. This is a situation where I think the Titans could try to run the football, but when your starting running back isn't playing so well, maybe you're not going to. Third down and three here for the Titans. Bunch look to the left for Tannehill. It is going to be a pass. Tannehill drops back. He's got Chica Conquo for a first down. 11 for 16, 111 yards passing, and he's got the one touchdown. Two tight ends set here for the Titans. A Conquo and Wiley out there. It's going to be a give to Derrick Henry, and it's another tackle for loss for this defense. Only 13 yards for Derrick Henry. This is exactly what you need to start off the first half. Get, I mean, the second half. Get the Titans behind the chains. As Tannehill is forced to pass again, he's going to hit Jamison Crowder as he's going to pick up very good yardage. Third down and four upcoming. Third down and four. I got to imagine they're going to pass the football here. I don't think they trust Derrick Henry enough in this situation. Here we go. This one is thrown to DeAndre Hopkins, and he's got it for a first down. Kirby Joseph in coverage, and that's a matchup nightmare for a guy like DeAndre Hopkins. Only a second catch, but that one was a huge one. Here's a first down and 10 from the 34-yard line. As the Titans have not really had a great day running the football. We've talked about that, but there's Levi Wallace in coverage. Glad we kept him around. He's a guy who I'm very interested in re-signing later on in the offseason. Safety's cheating up a little bit here on second down and 10. It's Tannehill passing yet again as this one is caught by Wiley. Third down and five upcoming. Third and five, we're showing that double A blitz look yet again. As on last one, we were able to get in there, and we are able to get in there again. Joey Porter Jr. in coverage. If you guys watch that back, we're bringing six on the blitz, and their offensive line isn't able to, 
you know, kind of point out who they're going to pick up. And because of that, we have a free rusher yet again. Tannehill's forced to get rid of the football quickly. And a field goal attempt upcoming. And it's right through. Seven. No, my fault. Ten to six. Holy crap. I can't speak in this game. Here comes Najee Harris. Ten carries for 47 yards in the first half. You know, I talked about it at halftime that he really wasn't having a great game so far. He's actually having a really good game at the moment. Just doesn't really feel like it because usually we're used to seeing him pick up like six yards a carry. This time the Titans have done a much better job at limiting the damage here for our running game. Here's a big carry for Najee Harris. He's got a lot of space and he's going to have a pickup of about 20 yards on first down. So much for saying Najee Harris wasn't having a big game so far. Split look here for the Steelers. Warren and Najee Harris in the backfield. We've seen this formation quite a few times the last couple of weeks as there is Najee Harris, another good pickup of nine this time. And Trubisky wants us to hurry up. Hurry up offense here for the Steelers as this time we're going to give the football to Jalen Warren and he's going to have a first down pickup inside the 40-yard line. Only his fourth carry so far, but he has made the most of his opportunities. Najee Harris a little sore after these last couple of plays, so he will take a break here. First down and 10. Here is another rush for Jalen Warren. Deontay Johnson picks up a block as Jalen Warren has another big pickup. 50 yards for Jalen Warren. Just to be clear, that wasn't a 50-yard pickup. I'm not that dumb. He has 50 total yards. I'm guessing you guys could infer on that one. Another run for the Steelers as Jalen Warren is going to be taken down for a loss. We're not passing the ball here so far in the second half. Flipping the play here for the Steelers. Bunch to the left of Trubisky now. And it's going to be a play action. We're going to try and hit Allen Robinson. He was open. Trubisky just missed him. Wanted to lead him up the field. Robinson and him were not on the same page. As a lot of people are tired here for the Steelers at the moment, I have progressive fatigue off in this series, so I don't know if that is what the case is. But a lot of people are tired in this game. So we're going to try and hit Calvin Austin. He's open. Calvin Austin scores. Touchdown, Steelers. What a play. Calvin Austin... Is not a guy you're going to see on the offense that often the rest of this season. But on that play right there, he was open. Trubisky hit him very quickly. And then he did the rest after the catch. He cuts back to the left, allows George Pickens to pick up the block on Kevin Byard. And then he strolls into the end zone to give the Steelers the lead. So I'm kind of interested if progressive fatigue is potentially on. Because there's a lot of players on this team right now that are sore. I think that's partially due to the fact that we're playing on a short week. So that would make more sense. Due to the fact you're playing on Thursday night football, your players are going to be more tired. And you kind of see that in the NFL a little bit. Thursday night football games just aren't good games most of the time because a lot of players are just banged up. Not a lot of time to recover from injuries from the previous week. And, it, you know, that's just that's what it is. First down to 10, here's a gift for Derrick Henry. I almost said Najee Harris. Both are running backs from Alabama. And I think that's his biggest carry of the game so far. Second down for the Titans, another run for Derrick Henry, and he's got a first down pickup, trying to get Henry going, trying to get the beast going. First down to 10, here's a pass for Tannehill. Here comes Hayward. Tannehill gets rid of it, but Derrick Henry, maybe he was eating some popcorn before the game. Second down to 10 upcoming, Keanu Neal was out there in coverage. Typically not going to see him out there in a linebacker role. Makes me wonder if Madden's effing with my depth chart again. Second down to 10 here for Tannehill. He's going to find a man open, and it's caught by Wiley. Elandon Roberts was in coverage. Typically not a guy you want to see in coverage. Five-yard pickup as here comes third down for the Tennessee Titans. Nick Herbig is now on the field. I think we're seeing a lot of different guys on the field now due to the fact that people are just tired. Here's DeAndre Hopkins, and the pass is broken up by Joey Porter Jr., yeah, I think a lot of guys on our team at the moment are just exhausted. Nick Herbig's not a guy you're going to see out there that often. Alex Highsmith was off the field on that play, and it's going to bring up a punt as Joey Porter Jr. had very good coverage on that play. Calvin Austin set to return this one as he is going to be taken down at the 21-yard line. That's where Najee Harris and Mitchell Trubisky will come back out. Harris nearing that 1,000-yard mark here on the season as he has put together a very strong start here in his third year. First and 10, here's a pitch to Jalen Warren trying to create some space, and he's going to pick up a couple of yards. Seven carries for 52 for Jalen Warren. Second down and seven, here is a play action for the Steelers as we're going to see 
Trubisky got out of the pocket, try and hit Deontay Johnson, tried to lead him up the field, and it turned out to be a bad pass. Roger McCreary has done a very good job today covering Deontay Johnson. Third down and step seven here for the Steelers. Try and hit Pat Fryermuth. He is open. Pat Fryermuth's going to have a first down. Moving the chains. Pat Fryermuth having a pretty good day so far. First and 10 here. Play action again for the Steelers. As we're going to try and hit Allen Robinson. This one might be intercepted by Byard again. And it is his second interception of the day. Thrown too late. Trubisky, he needs to hit Allen Robinson extremely quickly on that break. Two interceptions for Trubisky in this game is not good. You watch it again. Right here is where you got to hit Allen Robinson. He's open right there. Instead, Trubisky just waits, 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 waits. Finally throws it. At this point, there's two guys in the area. If you were to call this play again, you literally fake to Najee quickly to Allen Robinson. And it's a first down pickup. That's my fault on that one. You know, as soon as I threw it, I knew that it was probably intercepted, that we should have thrown the ball a lot sooner. As this has been a rough game today for Mitchell Trubisky, a guy who I talked about potentially taking over the starting quarterback role even when Kenny Pickett is healthy. After this game, I don't really know. As here's a first down completion to number 81, Wiley, nine-yard pickup. I honestly think regardless of the way that this game has gone, we are definitely going to see Trubisky start next week. But if he were to have another two-interception game, then we're talking about you know, Pickett finally getting his opportunity coming back from injury as Derrick Henry has a first down pickup. Two tight ends in the formation for the Titans. First and 10 as we near the end of the third quarter. Here's a Derrick Henry run, breaking tackles, and he's finally taken down by Mika Fitzpatrick, a pickup of four. You got to think if maybe one of the plans that the Titans had in this game was to, you know, save Henry's carries for later in the game. As here's a blitz for the Steelers, and that one could have been intercepted as that was Patrick Peterson in coverage, really have not called his name that much at all this season. Third down and six for the Titans. TJ Watt without a sack in this game. Here's a quick pass, and it's caught by Traylon Burks, but he's going to be short of the first down. Patrick Peterson was inches away from having the Steelers' first interception of the season. Fourth and inches, and they are going to send out the field goal kicker to try and tie this game up. It's going to be about a 53-yard attempt in Pittsburgh at this time of year. It's a difficult kick, and it's going to be right through by inches. Folk on the kick, and that was inches away from hitting the upright. Tie game here in Pittsburgh with 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Calvin Austin's going to try and change that here on the kickoff return. He's got a little bit of space, and he's taken down by Hooker. Seven seconds left. We're going to run the football here. Take this one to the fourth quarter. We have played a pretty good game on offense, but it just feels like costly interceptions is the story at the moment. We're actually not going to run the football. I'm seeing no high safeties. We're just going to launch this one deep for George Pickens. Number zero is pretty quick, but Pickens is a monster. First down, and that's going to end the third quarter. That's Sean Murphy bunting wearing number zero for the Titans. That's the second time we threw it deep to George Pickens, and then he was step for step with George Pickens. On that one right there, it didn't matter. Pickens went up, made the play, as we have the football across midfield to start the fourth quarter. As a matter of fact, we're at the 25-yard line. George Pickens, four catches for 78 yards in this game. Deontay Johnson has been pretty much a non-factor so far in this one. Here's a run for Najee Harris. He picks up four yards, his 13th carry of the game. Second down and six here for the Steelers. It's going to be a play action. Try and hit Connor Hayward, and he's going to pick up four yards. Third down and two upcoming for the Steelers. I'm liking the way this game is played out for sure. It has been a defensive game. We've thrown two interceptions. You know, I talked about it in the last episode. I just talked about it like five times in this one. What am I talking about? Third and two. Here's a run for Najee. He's got space. Kevin Byard makes the stop at the three-yard line. But I had mentioned that, you know, the interception slider kind of being a concern. The defenses for the CPU drop a lot of interceptions. But Kevin Byard's a guy that's not going to drop many interceptions. But we're going to have the football set up first down and goal from the three-yard line. Ten and a half minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Trubisky, he's got Fryermuth open, and it's going to be a touchdown for Pat Fryermuth. The Steelers reclaim the lead. Pat Fryermuth, two touchdowns in the last two games for him. He's had himself a pretty good season so far as he spikes it down as the Steelers take the lead in this one. 
I like throwing play action out of that formation. We run the football probably 90% of the time out of it. That time we went play action. And Trubisky had the speed to elude the rusher. As with the PAT, we can make this a 20-13 to 13 game. Trubisky has bounced back in a big way in this game. He's thrown two interceptions, but he's also got two passing touchdowns in this one. Only 34 rushing yards for the Titans in this one. As here's another pass. It is Derrick Henry out of the backfield. He's going to have a pickup of seven. Tannehill has thrown the football 28 times in this game. Three tight ends set. DeAndre Hopkins, the only receiver out there for the Titans. I'm guessing this one's going to be a run. It is going to be a run to Derrick Henry, and he's going to be tackled for loss yet again. It's Cole Holcomb once again. I don't know how many TFLs that is for Holcomb, but he has played a very good game. Only 198 yards allowed so far in this game. Third down and four. We're going to bring the blitz. Here's Tannehill. He's got a man not open. Mika Fitzpatrick in coverage. Fourth down upcoming. This Steelers defense is playing very good. Stonehouse will boot this one away. Austin is going to have space to return this one. And he's going to actually try and run to the right. Cut back. Nope. Taken down at the 13-yard line. Good coverage by the punt unit. First down and 10. We're going to try and hit George Pickens. He's got it for a pickup of nine. We're going to go hurry up here. As I like that the fact the Titans weren't showing a good defensive front. Something that we can definitely run on. Here is Najee Harris. And he's got a first down pickup up to the 38-yard line, 110 yards on only 15 carries. First down and 10, it's going to be a play action. We're going to hit Fryermuth. He's going to have a lot of space. Pat Fryermuth with a first down pickup, 221 yards for Mitchell Trubisky in this one. Two touchdowns, two interceptions, but the big story is the seven catches, 78 yards for Pat Fryermuth. First down and 10 here. We're going to set up the tight end screen for Fryermuth. This is his eighth catch of the game. And he's going to have a solid pickup of about eight yards. Second down and two as Trubisky is going to step up in the pocket. Trubisky using his wheels is going to have a first down pickup. I was going to say pick using his speed, but then I said using his wheels. Merged them together and it made no sense. And this is going to set up first down and ten here. Potentially running the clock out. If we score a touchdown, I would be fairly confident that this game could be almost over. Here's a run for Najee Harris. Lacked patience on, that, patience on that one, as Le'Veon Bell would have certainly had the patience. Second down and eight here. Trubisky's just going to scramble, and he is taken down. Dan Moore injured on the play. That one right there was not a design quarterback run, but Tr Trubisky kind of treated it as a design run. Wasn't meant to be that way, but it is what it is. Third down and 12 here for the Steelers. Steelers are going to pass here. Trubisky's going to get out of the pocket. Allen Robinson was wide open, but it doesn't matter. Trubisky picks up the first down with his legs. With his legs, with his speed, with his wheels, it does not matter. Mitchell Trubisky is getting it done. First down and 10. Trubisky going to get out of the pocket once again as he's going to throw this one back across his body to Pat Fryermuth for four yards. Trubisky's doing some Patrick Mahomes type things in this game. Nine catches for 90 yards for... Pat Fryermuth. Second down and six for the Steelers. We're going to launch this one up to Deontay Johnson trying to make a play. He caught it, but he was out of bounds. Third and six upcoming for the Steelers. Four minutes and 25 seconds left in this game. We're going to set up the screen to Najee Harris. He's going to have space. Najee Harris, spin move as he is taken down at the seven-yard line. Four minutes left in the fourth quarter. The Steelers trying to take as much time off the clock as possible. Second down and goal for the Steelers from the three-yard line. Three minutes roughly left in the fourth quarter. Here's the give to Jalen Warren. He's going to spin off a tackler and score. The Pittsburgh Steelers extend their lead to 13 as they are three minutes and 14 seconds away from walking out of here with a victory. 27 to 13 is the score. Both of our right tackles now injured. We're just going to rock with Dan Moore at the moment. Don't want a core four out there anyways. The Titans are not out of this game. They would need to score a touchdown very quickly and then hope for an onside kick. But you have seen crazier things in football as here comes Ryan Tannehill. Got to wonder if the reason that the Titans are struggling in this game offensively is because they haven't, not, they haven't been able to establish a run. And that's what the Titans football is all about. 33 rushing yards is just insanity. As they're going to pass, Traylon Burks is open and he's got it to the 48-yard line. First down and 10 now from the logo. Like I was saying, no running game is bad news for this Tennessee Titans offense. Here is Tannehill. He's going to throw this one away. 
Second down to 10. Quick pass here for the Titans as Jamison Crowder for a first down pickup. At this point in the game, we're just going to go with a cover four. Don't get beat deep. And then hopefully it treats us well. As here's Highsmith. Nearly got to Tannehill. Tannehill's going to scramble. And he's going to slide down after a three-yard pickup. Probably didn't need to slide there. Didn't really look like Joey Porter Jr. was in good position to try and make a tackle. Last play before the two-minute warning. It's Tannehill. Across the middle, he's got DeAndre Hopkins open. As that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. 27-13 to 13 is the score. Titans need to score, and they need to score quickly. They have all three of their timeouts, as long as they don't use any here. As there's Cameron Hayward with the sack, his first of the game. Hurry up offense for the Titans. A minute and 38 seconds left in this one. That was our third sack as a team. Second down and 17. Tannehill is going to hit his open man as there is a penalty flag down. Maybe Watt got to the quarterback just a tad bit late. And that is going to be the call. Roughing the passer on Alex Highsmith, not TJ Watt. But that's going to set him up first down and goal from the four-yard line. First down and goal. Here is Tannehill trying to get this one to Wiley. And he is pushed out of bounds at the one-yard line. Can't call your timeouts. That's just something you cannot do if you're the Titans. You need those three timeouts. Second down a goal. Here is a pass. It is DeAndre Hopkins for a touchdown. As the Titans have narrowed the Steelers' lead to just eight now. And with a minute and ten seconds left in this game, they have all three timeouts. Do you think about just kicking it deep? They're going to go with the onside kick. All right. As I went with onside XL, I don't think that's what we should have went with. I can't call a timeout. As this one is going to be fielded by Allen Robinson. Just stay down. Just run out of bounds, I guess. Allen Robinson will run out of bounds at the 46-yard line. If we pick up a first down, this game is over. One minute and seven seconds left on the clock here. Deontay Johnson comes in motion. There's a jet touch pass to him as he's going to be taken down for a loss. Second down and 12 upcoming. The worst imaginable play on first down. Second down and 12 for the Steelers offense. Here's a run with Jalen Warren. He picked up the game ceiling first down last week. He's going to be three yards short. Third down and three upcoming. A first down ends this game. Here's the toss out to Najee Harris, and he's going to go down for a loss. Titans call timeout, and the Steelers are going to have to punt this football away. I don't know if I was, be, if I was too conservative there. I really don't know if I could have changed anything, as hopefully this is a good punt for Presley Harvin. It is. It's down to the eight-yard line. The Titans have 49 seconds to go 92 yards. At this point in the game, just do not get beat deep, please. And tackle them inbounds. If you tackle them inbounds, the clock will continue to run as it's first down and 10 here. Here is Tannehill getting out of the pocket as he's going to throw this one away wisely. 37 pass attempts for Ryan Tannehill in this game. I'm hoping we can get our first interception of the season. It's probably unlikely as 44 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Been a very good game. The Steelers ran away with it late in, the one, in this one. There's Chiga Conquo. He's going to catch this one inbound, so the clock will continue to run. You can't afford to do that probably even one more time. Third down and one for the Titans. They go play action. Here's Watt. This one is a wobbly pass thrown away. Fourth down and one upcoming. Going play action there is just stupid. I don't know why you would go play action. Makes no sense. Fourth down and one. Titans need a conversion here, but they need to make sure they get out of bounds to stop the clock. Fourth and one. Here it is. Three-man rush. Here is Chica Conquo. He's not going to get out of bounds. And with 14 seconds left, do they have enough time to get there and call one last play? They do. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. They get the snap off, and it is picked off by Patrick Peterson. We have been waiting for this moment. Our first interception as a team. Oh my gosh, I thought it would never happen. As we are going to win this game against the Tennessee Titans on Thursday night football. Mitchell Trubisky threw two interceptions in this one, but he threw him to a very good safety in Kevin Byard. We ran the ball extremely well. Felt like we didn't call the smartest plays on that last drive, but I felt like they're not going to have any timeouts. We can potentially down them inside the 20-yard line. They're going to have to go 80-plus yards with like 45 seconds left with zero timeouts. So... I wanted to play our chances on that one, and it worked out very well. We get our first interception as a team. That feels amazing. When you look at the stats here, 431 yards on offense. We ran the ball for nearly 200 yards. 25 first downs compared to their 17. 
We did have the two interceptions, but we were extremely efficient on third downs. We dominated the time of possession, as usual, it feels like, as both quarterbacks threw for over 200 yards, and they threw over 34 attempts, each of them. Their QBRs are almost the exact same, but the two interceptions by Trubisky kind of hindered his a little bit. When you look at the running, Najee Harris, 18 carries for 114. Jalen Warren, 9 for 64 and a touchdown. Looking at receiving, Pat Fryermuth, 9 for 90 and a touchdown. Very good game for Pat Fryermuth. George Pickens, 5 for 87, really good game from him. And then Deontay Johnson had his first quiet game of the season. Only two catches for seven yards. And then Calvin Austin had a touchdown in this one as well. Allen Robinson with only one catch. And then looking at our offensive line here, Isaac Samalu gave up two sacks. Broderick Jones gave up one. Defensively, we had four TFLs for Cole Holcomb. He played an extremely good game. Danico Autry, one and a half sacks. Cameron Hayward, one. Montrevious Adams with one. And then a couple guys with half sacks here for the Titans. And then the interceptions, Kevin Byer with two. And Patrick Peterson finally gives us our first interception as a defense. Only our third takeaway so far. But I'm hoping that the slider change will make up for the amount that we don't have so far. Kicking, Chris Boswell is perfect. Nick Folk was perfect. Punting, four punts for the Titans, two for us, as our offense continues to play pretty well. 27-20, to 20, we defeat the Titans on Thursday night football. So, Broderick Jones with an upgrade after that game. We're going to continue to upgrade pass protector. I want to make him one of the best left tackles in football, if possible. As 27-20, to 20, we win this one. We have some big news for next week against the Green Bay Packers as well. Here's the reaction to the short week. I don't think Allen Robinson was entirely happy with the way that we played. He wanted to get four offensive touchdowns. We got three. But honestly, who cares? We won 27 to 20 as we have some staff to upgrade here. I'm going to continue to look at the offensive coordinator, Victor Price. As I think what I want to do is I want to go ahead and boost awareness for quarterbacks by one. Never mind. Can't actually do that one. Maybe I should have looked before I said anything. Instead... I'll continue to upgrade our power running for our tight ends. Probably could have just saved our points up and then gotten the quarterback awareness, but who cares? So we got some player upgrades to go through here. George Pickens with his first. I want to continue to upgrade Deep Threat because that's exactly what we've been using him as recently as that will bump him up to an 83 overall. James Daniels will also get an upgrade here. I want to go with power. He'll be 78 all across the board with all three archetypes. And then James Daniels is 25 years old. Liking the way he's playing, so... We're going to look to maybe keep him around just a little bit. And then Keanu Neal, I'm going to go with run support. I want him playing down in the box. He's not a good coverage safety, but he is a pretty good safety slash linebacker hybrid. And then a couple other upgrades here. I'll go through these quickly, and then we will move on. So I think the biggest story for this game against the Green Bay Packers is the fact that Kenny Pickett is now healthy. I have made the decision to give Mitchell Trubisky the starting job moving forward if he has a rough game against the Packers throws you know multiple interceptions then we will see what Kenny Pickett has in the following week against the Browns but as of right now Mitchell Trubisky seeing as he's only lost one game as a starter and it was against the undefeated Baltimore Ravens he will continue to get starts until he proves otherwise you know he threw two interceptions against the Titans but it was Kevin Byer he's not a guy that's going to you know let you make a mistake and then forgive it He's going to make you pay for making mistakes, and that's what he did in that game. Mitchell Trubisky, I have confidence that he will bounce back against the Packers. They have Jair Alexander, but I'm not really too worried about it. I think Trubisky will have a good game, and if he continues to have good games, he will continue to be our starting quarterback. And never mind, the Ravens are no longer undefeated. They lost to the Seahawks, so that leaves the Kansas City Chiefs as the lone undefeated team in football. Somehow, the Carolina Panthers are 6-2. and two. I don't know how. The Bills win, so that would make the Bengals' record go even worse and even farther south. We are 5-3 and three at the moment. If you look at our points for and points against, they're nearly even as we are on a home winning streak as well. If you go down the board here, the Browns are 4-4, four and four, so they're actually playing some pretty decent football at the moment. The Cincinnati Bengals are among one of the worst teams in football, 2-6. and six. They have more points than they do points against. If that tells you anything about the way they've played this season, their offense has been fine. Their defense has really been the problem. Either that or they're just not scoring enough. The Giants are 2-7. and seven. Broncos 1-7. and seven. Patriots 1-8. And, and the Colts are 1-8 and eight as well. 
So we just talked about Jair Alexander. 95 overall is the highest overall on the Green Bay Packers. David Bakhtiari with 91 overall. Aaron Jones, 90. Rashawn Gary, go blue. And then looking down the board here for them, AJ Dillon's a 78 overall. But it's a big drop off. Demonte Casey, who we sent over to the Packers. But their quarterback is Jordan Lovey, 76 overall. We're going to look to take advantage of his inexperience in that game. And then we'll check to see if they have any injuries before we play that game against them. But we are 5-3, and three, which makes me feel good at the moment moving forward. We've played really good football as of late. It's been, it had been three weeks since we last turned the football over. I mean, actually, that's not true at all because we fumbled the football against the Ravens. So never mind what I just said. As looking at the stats here, we are 10th in offensive yards. And then we are 22nd in defensive yards. It's probably due to the fact that we gave up a lot of yards in the first couple of games. Sixth in points scored. And then points allowed, we are probably among the worst. Yeah, 30th in the NFL in points allowed. Looking at points per game, we are up there among some of the best teams with 26.4 points per game. Defensively, I don't feel like we, we have given up the most points. We actually have you know, given up quite a few points. And then if you look farther down the board, let's look at sacks real quick as we are tied for the Bills for second most sacks in football. And then looking down at turnovers here, our differential is going to still remain one of the worst, negative 10. We've given the ball away 13 times. We had two interceptions in the last game. But we now have three takeaways, which the Giants still with only their one. But we need more takeaways for sure. But I'm really not sweating it. The Chiefs only with six takeaways. So we finally got our first interception. We got that monkey off of our back. Looking at player stats, Mitch Trubisky, 13 touchdowns, six interceptions with 1,600 yards. Rushing the football, Najee Harris, little over 200 yards away from 1,000 on the season. Jalen Warren with 325. And then receiving, I think our receiving leader by far is going to be Pat Fryermuth. As our leading receiver is George Pickens as far as yardage, Fryermuth is in third. And then we have four receivers tied with two touchdowns. Defensively, seven and a half sacks for TJ Watt, one INT, and that is by Patrick Peterson. And that's really all there is to talk about for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it as we defeated the Tennessee Titans on Thursday Night Football. We look to take on the 5-3 Green Bay Packers at home. This looks like it's going to be a really good game. Both teams are battling for a playoff spot. And both teams are just all-time classic teams. Another thing I wanted to mention, Desmond King did sign an extension with the Detroit Lions after the trade. So it does work out for the Lions as they're a struggling team so far this season. But we are at the halfway point in the season. We're 5-3. and three. We're looking good as of late. Mitchell Trubisky will continue to be our starter. And we'll see how Kenny Pickett handles that moving forward. Because if Trubisky continues to play well, he will continue to be our QB1. If he struggles, Pickett will get an opportunity. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video when we take on the Green Bay Packers. See ya.